Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through how to create an unstructured mesh in Gmesh that you can use in CFD simulations. To understand the basics of how to generate this mesh, I will be showing it on a simple four-point rectangle. In future videos, I will be using these meshes to work through some examples using this SU2 CFD code that you can download online for free. So I'm starting out with a blank file called rectangleunstructured.geo. This is the geometry file, this is not the mesh file. So we're going to define the geometry by going up to here, pressing geometry, adding uh, elementary entities, and we're going to add, and we're going to start out with some points. So then this pops up here, and to uh, select points, I, you can see my cursor moving around here, and I'm going to start by moving it to an xy coordinate of 0, 0. And so this is the 0x coordinate, and this is the 0y coordinate. And so in here, I click in, and you can see up at the top of the screen, uh, it says press shift to hold position, E to add point, or Q to abort. So I'm going to press E, and that adds the point there, and you can see there's a point sitting right there. And now I'm just going to add uh, three other points to complete this rectangle, so I'll do uh, 0, 1. And to move the screen, you right-click on the mouse, and you can move it around. And so if I go from here and I go up to 0, 1, something like this, then I can press E again. I'll go over to 1, 2, like this, and then I'll go down to 0, 2, like this, press E again, and that completes the four points for our rectangle. Now that we're done adding the points, we can uh, abort out of the points. So I'm going to close out of here, and then you can see Q to abort, so I'm going to press Q, and that gets me out of it. And now you can see I only see one point, so I'm going to zoom out by scrolling out, and I can move this by right-clicking and shifting over. If you left-click, you can see that it rotates the axes, and you can press Alt-Z to get back to the normal plane. And so now we need to add lines in, in between the points here to make our surface. And so I'm going to go into Add, and we're going to add Straight Line, and I'm going to click the starting point, the ending point, it makes a line. Click the starting point, ending point, starting point, ending point, starting point, ending point. That's all the lines we need, and we can press Q to abort. That finishes the line section. Now we need to make this a plane surface, and so we go into Add, and down here we click Plane Surface, and it says select the surface boundary. So we click here, the surface boundary is this entire thing, and we're going to press E, and you can see it creates the plane surface, and then we're going to press Q to abort. The next step is to specify boundary condition names for these lines. So let's say that I have an inflow over here, an outflow over here, and these are two walls. We need to define that so we can define the boundary conditions in the configuration file that SU2 needs. So I'm going to go into uh, get out of the elementary entities, and we're going to go into physical groups, and I'm going to add and I'm going to add a line. And so when I go into here, this is what the name will be, uh, the name of the boundary condition, or what they call a marker in SU2. And so let's say I select this line here. I'm going to call this inlet. So I'm just going to type inlet, press enter, but you still need to press E uh, to set that selection. So that's set. Now we go to this one. I'm going to call that outlet. So I'll select outlet, press E. And then this one I'll call top, which is the top wall, for instance. And then this will be the bottom bottom, and then I press E, and now those are all set, and I'm going to press Q to abort. Now that we have the uh, grid defined here, we can actually do the meshing, so if you back out of the geometry and move into the mesh section, we open up mesh, and we can click on 2D, and now you can see that this is a really sparse or coarse mesh, and we want to be able to refine it, so if you go up to element size at point, I'm going to select each of the four points in this mesh here, and I'm just showing you how to do it, I'm not explaining why or how this uh, works here, but if you select all the four points, and then let's say that we want to change it to some value like this, point one, I'm going to press enter, click in here, and I'm going to press E to end the selection, close out of that, abort the select points, and now if I uh, if I click 2D, nothing happens, but then if I click 1D and then 2D, now you can see that it refines the mesh. Now let's say that you wanted to refine the mesh a little bit more. Uh, you could go back into the element size at point, click all the points, and then enter a new value, uh, and do 1D, 2D to mesh again, or you can just open up the file, and if you go into geometry, and then you can select edit file, and the geo uh, notepad file comes up here, and you can see that this is the characteristic length that we've set, and so if I want to uh, change this value, I can just change it here, and I'll change it to 0.05, click save, close out of it, click reload, and then if you go back down here, and press 2D again, you can see it meshes and it refines the mesh. We can do that again, open it up, you can even go to 0.01, save, reload the file, 2D, takes a little bit more time here, and now you can see an even finer mesh. Now before I save this file, I'm just going to go back and uh, bring down the number of points again. I'll go 0.05, save it, 
reload 2D. Okay, and now I want to save this out because this still isn't a mesh file. This is still the geometry file. So to save as a mesh file, I'm going to go into File, Save As. It's going to guess from extension, and I'm just going to change this to the mesh file that I need for my program, which is a .su2 file. And I'm going to press Save. It'll say Save All. Press OK and now the mesh has saved. Now we can go into that file, the .su2 file. I'll open up with Notepad++, and here is the uh, mesh file that you can use in your CFD program. So that was how to create an unstructured mesh on a rectangular domain. I'll be making some videos on how to use the meshes I generate in GMesh to run a problem in SU2, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching.